Well, good morning. This is part three in our Easter devotional series. And I, I hope you're doing well. And I know that this is really a strange week. Uh, right now we're in the midst of sheltering. Many of you are quarantined at home. Some are homeschooling your kids. Uh, some of you are driving the work, but it just feels different. Uh, maybe you're out of work right now and you don't know when that's going to change. And I, I really hope where we go in the book of John today encourages you. Uh, last week we looked at this story uh, really right before Jesus' arrest in which he did this act of service and showed his love by washing the feet of his disciples. Right after that we find this story. This is John chapter 13. I'm going to start in verse 21. After he had said this, Jesus was troubled in spirit and testified, Very truly I tell you, one of you is going to betray me. His disciples stared at one another, at a loss to know which of them he meant. One of them, the disciple whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter motioned to this disciple and said, Ask him which one he means. Leaning back against Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. Then, dipping the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot. As soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered into him. So Jesus told him, What you are about to do, do quickly. But no one at the meal understood why Jesus said this to him. Since Judas had charge of the money, some thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the festival or to give something to the poor. As soon as Judas had taken the bread, he went out, and it was night. Now, that, that last line is a little bit interesting. You know, we read, and it was night, and we think, oh, he'd just tell us what time of day it was. It was evening. Well, there's more to it than that. Throughout the book of John, uh, John loves to talk about light and darkness, day and night. And it, it, he views them as being very symbolic. Uh, day, uh, light time, that's when good things happen. That's when there's the fullness of God's blessing. Darkness and nighttime is the opposite. That's when evil lurks. That's when things happen in secret. And what John is saying is we're reaching a point in the story where evil is going to have its say. From the disciples' point of view, I mean, the few hours Jesus will be arrested, things will be moving toward the crucifixion, the world's going to feel very scary and out of control. You know, maybe you feel that way right now. You know, as we watch the news, as you see what's happening to our economy, uh, when you see the death rate rise, uh, those are scary things. It's very easy to just say, man, it is nighttime. It is darkness in America, darkness in the world. But here's what encourages me about this passage. If you know the story, first of all, Jesus is not surprised about this. Jesus knows that this is coming. But this is exactly what God is going to use to get Jesus on the cross so Jesus can fulfill his mission, so Jesus can defeat darkness, defeat evil once and for all. God is in firmly in control of the night. And the same is true of what we're going through. You know, it may seem chaotic to us, but God is still moving his purposes forward. God is still on the throne. And I don't know about you, but, you know, when I look at the news and when I get nervous, this is good news I can hold on to going through the day. So I want to encourage you as you go through the day, uh, when you see things happening that scare you a bit, Take some time to remember that God is on the throne and praise Him for that. Praise Him that He's still good.